Signing up on websites is something we are all familiar with, but as web developers, it's worth considering new ways to present those signups and login pages. Instead of just sticking to those basics, why not making it more engaging? Imagine creating an interactive experience in 3D where a virtual ID card appears next to the page, showing the user's details. It would make the process more fun and memorable. So let's do just that. Let's create a 3D interactive card that users can interact with. This isn't my biggest project, but I have worked on many others, especially in 3Js, where I have created a lot of different projects. I've even put together a 3Js course that teaches you everything from the basics to building your own 3Js project, just like this one. Alongside the course videos, I've included a detailed blog that covers every aspect you need to learn, with the links to all relevant documentation. The course site might seem a bit different because I wanted you to offer more than just video lessons have packed with extra resources to help you dive deeper. Normally, I'm selling this course for around $123, but I'm offering a special discount right now. So you can grab it for just $90. It's a great deal and I hope to see many of you there. All right, let's jump into this project. Look, I'm not the guy who's going to walk you through every tiny detail of this code. I'll just explain you how and why it works and focus on building the core part, not the UI or any other fluff. To get started, you'll need Blender, React, React 3 Fiber, DREA, React 3 Rapier, and MeshLine. If you're not familiar with these, check out my course where I break everything down in detail. The first thing to consider is the band component. Let's make that happen. We'll need a few reference to access them later. The canvas size is crucial for MeshLine, and we'll use a 3-dot catmull round curve 3 to calculate the smooth curve with just a few points. Only four points are needed for the physical joints. Once that's set up, we'll define the physical joints. A joint is a physics constraint that tells the engine how shapes interact with each other. We'll connect these joints to create a chain that hangs from a fixed point. The first joint will be attached using use rope.joint from Rapier, which offers various constraints for rotation, distances, etc. The other joints will connect to each other, forming a chain. Use rope joint requires two rigid body references. Two anchor points for each, we are using 0, 0,0,0, .0, which is a center point, and a length, we are using 1. And just like that, our rope is ready to swing. Next, we are going to create a curve. Wrap here will move the joints along an invisible rope, and we'll feed the position of these joints to cat mull rom curve. This allows us to generate a smooth interpolated curve with 32 points, which we then pass to the mesh line. We handle this in a real time at 60 or 120 FPS depending on your monitor's refresh rate. React 3 Rapier helps us to manage frame based animation using the use frame hook. Now, let's set up the view. It includes a fixed rigid body and a three rigid body components for the joints, which is going to be J1, J2, and J3, and the mesh line which is created. The joints are positioned to fall down with a slight swing. The only things left is the interactive card, which will attach to the end of the last joint. To do this, we'll need a new reference, some variables for the math, a state for dragging, and a new joint. This type will use a spherical joint so that the card can rotate freely. Rapier offers a few rigid body types like fixed, dynamic, and kinematic position. The card needs to be kinematic when dragged and dynamic when it's not. We'll later use pointer events to manage the drag state. Our previous use frame hook now looks like this. Calculating the drag state is a bit tricky. Without getting too deep into the details, if you want to translate a pointer event coordinate to a 3D object, it's called a camera and projection. 3Gs has mentioned for this and project state.camera, which handles most of the math. The resulting vector is applied to a kinematic translation. We move the card with the mouse or trackpad, and the joints will follow it whenever it goes. The other challenge is allowing the card to rotate while keeping it always facing forward, which isn't physically accurate, but it improves the user's experience. To do this, we use the current rotational velocity, which is card.current.angle velocity, and the rotation, which is going to be card.current.rotation, spinning the y axis towards the front. We use a cuboid collider for the card and place a mesh inside it that moves with the rigid body. This mesh will later be swapped with the Blender model. The pointer events for the up and down manage the track state. When the pointer goes down, we grab the current point of the model, E dot point, and subtract the chord's portion in space, which is chord dot current dot translation. We need this offset in the use frame hook to calculate the correct kinematic portion. 
I haven't added the 3D text to this code since I'm not using any login stage here. But if you need it, you can easily do that using text 3D. I'll provide a detailed explanation of how to do that in my blog. So feel free to check it out. At this point, we have everything in place. The basic meshes are quickly swapped out into the Blender models. And with a bit of tweaking and math, we can make the simulation more stable and less shaky. Feel free to play around with this page. Since it's an XJS app, you have endless possibilities to make it even cooler. So go ahead and give it a try. That's pretty much it. See you guys later.